Good morning. And I say good morning because it's morning in Austin, Texas. So good morning and greetings from the University of Texas at Austin's IC Squared Institute. It's exciting to see so many young, vibrant, and old, vibrant entrepreneurs here uh, in the same setting. I'm looking forward to sharing some wisdom that comes from our experience, as well as learning from you all about what your challenges have been as you have helped to build a successful innovation ecosystem, which is the title of my presentation. I notice that my name is spelled incorrectly on the slide. The second N on my name was quite important to my parents, and so I'll make sure that that gets mentioned. It's Glenn with a double N, Robinson. Anyway, that's okay. As long as it's spelled right on my paycheck, I really don't care. <laughs> so, let's get started. Greetings from Austin, Texas. How many of you have been to Austin, Texas before? So, a few people here. Well, I extend a hearty Texas welcome to all of you to join. There's a bumper sticker in Austin that is seen quite frequently and more frequently now that people like me continue to come from other states around the Union that says, I'm not from Texas, but I got here as quick as I could. So, Austin has become, since I've joined the ecosystem in Austin in 1995, the number one center of innovation and entrepreneurship in the United States, bypassing the Silicon Valley, according to many esteemed rating agencies, World Economic Forum, US News and World Reports, you can see them behind me, I won't walk you through all of them. We were just rated for the second year in, row, in a row as the number one large city to live in in the US and the number one city to start a large a, 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 a startup enterprise, sorry, a startup enterprise. So over the last 40 years, since the IC Squared Institute was created, Austin has gone through a tremendous metamorphosis. Now that doesn't mean because we're rated number one that innovation and entrepreneurship is easy in Austin. We just have a, a highly developed ecosystem of which we can benefit. And so I'm gonna give you some perspective on what we did to create that innovation ecosystem and some of the factors that come to play, some of the challenges that might be uh, encountered, and some of the things that we recommend that governments, universities, and industry, which is, by the way, the definition of the triple helix. Have any of you heard of the triple helix model? Yeah, so those are the three components, industry, government, and, and uh, education. And how that triple helix model comes to bear in creating that, that ecosystem. So you might ask yourself, so this guy's coming from Austin, Texas. I don't have a Texas accent, but I'll, I'll speak as a, as a resident Austinite. For a number of years in my career at Dell, I was a director of Latin American marketing, sales, and tech support. And I did a lot of traveling throughout uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. Now, you may be familiar with Caribbean. Uh, there's a lot of islands there. It's not all islands, there's some mainland that's also considered Caribbean, but there's a whole series of islands. And so I was there quite often, talking to customers and helping to develop business. And invariably, I got this question. Glenn, what do you know about us islanders? Island time is different. We think differently. We have different challenges. And my answer was, I am one. I was born on an island. This is the island that I call home, which is Hawaii. Although I moved on from Hawaii later on in my life to do other things and live in many other places around the world, the spirit of aloha, as we call it in Hawaii, still drives my thinking from a, from a heart standpoint and the priorities of family, community, communication, and interrelatedness. It also causes me to be late for many meetings, but that's okay, aloha, as we say in Hawaii. So it's all right. We understand about Indian Standard Time in, in Hawaii. So the next question is, 
you're coming from Austin, you've got all these advantages, you've got venture capital there, you've got angel networks that you've developed, you've got startup ecosystem. What do you know about creating innovation in emerging markets? Come on. We have different challenges in these markets where we live. We have different issues that come to play. Absolutely agree with that. Now, Austin 40 years ago had some of those same issues, but my answer is, I've been there and I'm doing that. So I've been living for the last two years in Tirupati, a temple town. Anybody ever been to Tirupati in the state of Andhra Pradesh? Not very many. So the, not, the most highly visited Hindu temple in the world is there in Tirumala. The Lord Balaji lives there and he blesses us every day with, with a tremendous amount of, of resources and, and energy. But it's very clearly an emerging state in an emerging market in India. And so for the last two years, this is my first cohort here, part of it behind me, and you can see the building. I have been dealing with those challenges. So I know what, to a certain extent, many of you are dealing with when you talk about being trapped on an island, and I, I mean trapped in the best sense of the word because it's a beautiful place to live. And uh, this is like coming home for me when I come here, but I also understand that an island is geographically limited and creates a small market. Hawaii was a small market as well. And so you've got to find opportunities outside of that market. And you've got to create ecosystems that might go beyond those borders. And you have challenges as your market evolves into a, 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 a productive and, and positive and, and more robust ecosystem. So let's talk a little bit about some of those challenges. So when I speak about this, I speak from some personal experience in both areas. In Andhra Pradesh, the vision of the Honorable Chief Minister uh, Chandra Babu Naidu was to, is to establish a world-class innovation ecosystem for job and wealth creation and to realize his vision of birthing one entrepreneur per family. So our concern is twofold. One is to create jobs and wealth which is what the IC Squared Institute was set up to do uh, 41 plus years ago, but also to create new entrepreneurs like many of you who are here in this audience, students, academics who are teaching students on what are the finer points of innovation and entrepreneurship. And it uh, has been quite a challenging run over the last 16 months of our four, four month cohorts. So how did we do at this? Well, the answer is we didn't do too badly. The companies that have come through our, our accelerator, 132 of them, 28 of which were selected for advanced commercial development working with the Austin uh, ecosystem and the, the University of Texas at Austin and our global footprint in 148 countries around the world with our IC Squared Fellows Network, uh, have generated $3.4 million of sales, have created over 1,000 jobs and have been successful in placing 124 graduate students in paid intern positions, working with real entrepreneurs, getting scars, and developing companies. So we are, are quite proud of this. The government has just extended our run, so we have another 16 months to go uh, to, to continue to develop this, so that says that I think we're doing something right. In July of last year, Entrepreneur India magazine selected Accelerate Andhra Pradesh as one of the top six incubators in India uh, with only seven months of runway. So another vote in favor of the fact that maybe the model, the methodology is working and so it's, it's possible to do this in an emerging market like the state of Andhra Pradesh. It's been so successful, in fact, that, that the uh, U.S. government, uh, the embassy in Delhi, and the State Department in, in Washington, D.C. have put funds in place to create what we call the South Asia Connect program. And a couple of our leaders are here. Could you stand up real quickly? I want to recognize the two guys that are helping us develop the market here in Sri Lanka. Are they here in the, in the building? I don't see if they're here. Maybe not. Okay, they were here. I saw them earlier today. So uh, we have, uh, our methodology is spreading from India into the rest of South Asia and developing these ecosystems. So we're just getting started here in Sri Lanka and we're very excited about that. So that's the emerging market side of this piece. Let's talk a little, about, a little bit about the Austin model. Uh, when George Kosmetsky founded the University, the IC Squared Institute at the University of Texas uh, 41 years ago, 
His idea was if you could take, and, and by the way, in those days, Austin was a provincial backwater with very little industry and no entrepreneurship. And the central Texas economy was in decline. The, the oil business had taken a, a dive. All of these buildings that has, had been built were not ever inhabited. We used to call them see-through buildings because they were all glass and you could see through from one side to the other and no one was there. And so the Texas government and the city of Austin was quite worried about all of this infrastructure that had been built and oil companies that were retreating back to Houston. And so George came in to be the dean of the business school and he quickly saw that there was great research being done at the Tech University of Texas. We were a premier research university even as a provincial, in a provincial environment. And there were great business minds that were being trained at the business school where George was. And he said if we could just combine those being a serial entrepreneur himself and the creator of Teledyne, uh, a defense company, George made a lot of money as a, uh, in a, as a serial entrepreneur creating Teledyne and other companies, and he brought that money to the University of Texas. He said, we could do what I did at Teledyne and create companies, jobs and wealth, and re-energize the central Texas economy. And he presented it to the University of Texas Board of Regents, and they said, George, that's a really great idea. But you know, we're an academic institution and we don't get our hands dirty with that stuff. We don't do sales and marketing. So thanks very much, but we're not gonna do it. And George said, that's fine, I'll do it with my own money. So George bought the land, he built the buildings, he hired the staff, he brought the methodology and then he deeded it back to the university with the understanding that it would always be used for job and wealth creation based on disruptive technology solving unstructured societal problems. And in order to do that, this co uh, collaboration model, wow, those graphics are pretty ugly, aren't they? Yeah. I see it really clearly down here. What that says behind me, in, it's actually in Telugu, that's why you can't read it. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't know. Sounds good to me. What it says is that there's a need for collaboration. So one of the, pol the, the panels that in, on which I'm going to sit today actually is, uh, talks about public policy and the, the, the involvement and the impact of public policy. The public or government sector of the Triple Helix is supremely important. It's important to create an environment and a support infrastructure to help companies grow. But there's a need for other stakeholders to enter that market and be part of that collaboration to generate what George called the Austin Technopolis, which is now number one. It was not that years ago. And that includes universities, which is up there. This is uh, Telugu for university right up there. Uh, it, it includes large co corporations. It also includes small and medium-sized businesses or emerging companies. It includes state government. It includes local government stakeholders. It includes support groups like communities, community uh, 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 organizations, it includes trade associations, even the federal government should get involved hopefully in supporting this, but everybody plays an important role in generating that model. So collaboration is the catalyst to make this work and everybody needs to work together and silos need to disappear. What we've discovered and learned over the last 40 years is that in order to have an innovation-based economic ecosystem, which is what George and the University of Texas IC Squared Institute was interested in, is that you start with basic research. That was being done at the University of Texas in those days and done very well. If basic research becomes applied, and I make a distinction between pure research and applied research for these purposes, so in other words, research that has market application and that is oriented towards getting into the market, that then becomes innovation, that drives innovation. In other words, implementation of the technology focused on a market, a sector, a territory, whatever it might be. But it can't stop there. Many of you have probably invented products and you said these are clearly going to sell themselves and then you went to the market and nobody cared, right? Never done that. Nobody's ever done that, right? Not been a problem. 
I challenge you that that is a problem. It's a problem in many of the cases that we look at in applications for our accelerator. But my product is just so great, it's going to change the world. Well, the reality is if a technology is invented and there isn't a market, is it a company? Is it a company? No, it's not a company because it can't sell anything. And if you can't sell anything, I maintain you do not have a company that will survive. And what you want is long runway. Okay? So innovation has to become, a, a research has to become applied in order to become effective innovation. In order for that research to be applied, there needs to be a Telugu version of the commercialization ecosystem. And that ecosystem includes all of the components that I just talked about. If you don't have an incubation process that makes sense and that is market focused, if you don't have philanthropic entities who want to help uh, entrepreneurs be successful through mentoring and coaching, if you don't have effective government policies that drive that innovation through funding and support and promotion, and if you don't have funding institutions, angel networks, venture capital networks that are highly focused on helping entrepreneurs be successful and make capital available in, in appropriate tranches of funding that is smart money, and by smart money I mean money that is applied by investors who care and who will help open doors for entrepreneurs and not just put in money and start talking about the first exit. And if you don't have markets and business relationships developed that will be a nice landing pad for your uh, technologies, then you don't have an effective commercialization ecosystem. But if that's there, the result should be economic impact. And if you look at Austin, Texas, we're a living example of the impact of innovation and entrepreneurship on the revitalization of an economy. Central Texas, Austin, Texas is number one in the, in the US uh, in, in terms of total economic impact. And the reason that people are coming and that the, the, the city is growing is because entrepreneurs are welcome. Entrepreneurs are welcome and given an opportunity. So economic impact then will spin out what? It'll spin out some licensing opportunities, technology that comes out of a university or a research center that has a, a landing pad that can be licensed to companies who are involved in that ecosystem, who are keeping their eye out for good techs, and who are licensing those technologies in. The University of Texas, we have a, the Office of Technology Commercialization, which is our tech transfer office that does hundreds of millions of dollars of licensing uh, every year to large, small, and medium-sized enterprises who are looking for solutions to help their companies grow. It could result in a startup. And many of you here are startups and you're examples of that. So, so technology applied in an economic ecosystem that's viable and healthy can lead to creation of startups. Startups then create jobs and wealth. One of the issues in Andhra Pradesh has been, very similar to Austin, Texas, there's a highly educated population but there are no jobs, and so students are leaving. The brain drain was a huge concern to the Honorable Chief Minister and his staff, and so they said, we want to keep students here, and students want to stay home because they want to stay close to culture, they want to stay close to family, they want to stay close to language. There are many reasons why they want to stay home, and so that was the, the creation of the, 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 the Accelerate Andhra Pradesh was to, in fact, make that possible to empower that process. And it could lead to sponsored research for universities. That means large corporations that are bringing bags of money to the university and, and asking the universities to develop products and services that they don't have the time or inclination to develop on their own. And this is a self-perpetuating cycle. So leading back into the, 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 the early part of the, of the model and then coming forward again as new products and services are developed. So what are some keys to uh, the innovation economies? What are some of the keys that you need to think about as you are developing your innovation economy? First of all, you want to exploit the local advantage. You want to develop and diffuse innovation expertise that's developed here. You want to encourage self-determination. You want to accelerate through collaboration with your peers and with others in the e ecosystem who share your particular interests. You want to let electrons be shared 
but ensure that atoms collide and you want to engage the virtuous cycle. Let's talk a little bit about each one of those briefly. So in Austin, our local advantage is we're a capital city. We have an anchor university there. We have we've become a center of music. Austin builds itself appropriately so as the live music capital of the world. We are now a technology center, art, music, film. We've now become a center of gaming and gamification development. So gaming companies are coming because of the robust commercialization ecosystem. And it's a center of entrepreneurship. That's a local advantage for us. Our culture is the quality of life. Like the Silicon Valley in its time, it's still cheap, affordable, the weather is good, and there's a young, vibrant community that is attracting young people to come to Austin. At any moment in time, at least after about 5 o'clock in the evening, you'll have 45 or 50 venues that are doing live music, having some kind of art, having some kind of, of, of gaming exhibition, or doing some sort of theater production. And so that's a, a local advantage for us. What is your local advantage? What can you sell to the world? Uh, one of the advantages that comes to my mind is that Sri Lanka can be a jumping off point or a jumping in point, depending on how you look at it, to other markets around South Asia and the world. Think about that. How can that help you as an entrepreneur develop products and service, services that are exportable to increase your market size? So you, then you want to diffuse that, that expertise. You want to share your knowledge with the world. You know, I came 10,000 miles to share with you all some of the expertise that we have at the University of Texas at Austin. And you can see here we've operated in 42 countries around the world. That's what we do. The question for you is how are you sharing your expertise with others? How are you helping raise the tide that will raise all boats here in Sri Lanka as well as possibly elsewhere in the world? Think about that. You want to encourage self-determinism. What do I mean? I mean, to a certain extent, innovators, entrepreneurs need autonomy to take the competencies that they have and collaborate with others in order to determine their destiny. And many of you, I'm sure, have been successful. I've talked to some already earlier today uh, who have already been successful in doing this, and, I, and my hat is off to you. And more of you, I'm sure, will do that in the future. It's for us the power of I can, realizing I can do this in the spite of or in the face of increasing pressure and global economic challenges, I can do this. It's a mindset. If any of you are pilots, you know that there's a, a, a gauge, two gauges on the, on the dashboard of a plane. One is attitude and one is altitude. And, and we often say that your attitude determines your altitude because if you're in, at cross purposes with the horizon, what happens? Your plane goes down and your future is limited. And so you wanna have the right attitude that I can, but I can't do this alone. I need people to collaborate and work with me and partner with me and support me and help me and educate me. And I've gotta have an open mind to receive that because a closed mind doesn't receive anything it repels and rejects. So you don't want to have a closed mind. You want to have an open mind to learn from others. And then say, look what we can accomplish together. This is awesome. What do they say? A, a rope of many strands is not easily broken. You need the people around you. I often say, all of us need each of us, and each of us need all of us. So self-determinism. And then, this is something that's important to me uh, that I always lift up as, in, uh, as, a, as a concept is that, you know, we're focusing on helping women entrepreneurs in Andhra Pradesh. When I started, we had a round number, which was zero, uh, of women-owned entrepreneurial ventures. And now we're at about not quite 20%. And that was intentional. We went out and recruited 
Women who said, I can, I can't do this alone, I want to collaborate, I have the right attitude, and they're, and they're successful. One of our top companies is owned by a woman, and it comes from a very small village in Andhra Pradesh. And so that can be done. And disadvantaged groups, I, I, I have a new friend. Dinesh, are you here? Dinesh, are you here? Just say hey, yes if you are. There he is, right back there. So Dinesh and I met uh, yesterday on the flight in from, from Delhi. Um, uh, Dinesh is visually challenged. You'll meet him at his booth out here. And he's got some incredible thoughts. Forget the technology that he has. That, don't forget it. Buy it. <laughs> it's good. But I mean, it, compared to the technology, what he has is a role model, is an example of a disadvantaged group, a disadvantaged individual who has been tremendously successful in the face of advantage, in the face of, of obstacles. And, and I, I, I just wanted to give him a special shout out. The conversation that we had coming in from the airport was quite illustrative to me to hear some of the things that, that can be done by disadvantaged groups and the support that they need from government and from the educational system to break the paradigm that blind people cannot do things well, that there are skills and tremendous advantages that sight-challenged individuals can, can provide. The same applies to all disadvantaged groups. We have a program at the Austin, in Austin, Texas, at the University of, of, of Texas that's called Fast Forward that pairs students from all disciplines, liberal arts, political science, engineering, doesn't matter their background, they can apply, they get academic credit for it, and they're paired with small and medium-sized businesses in Austin, Texas that are owned by disadvantaged and underrepresented groups, minorities, uh, otherwise challenged individuals, dis uh, disabled individuals, and others, women uh, who, who have exciting ideas, and we put students in touch with them. And I was telling Dinesh about this, and I said, the reason we do it is twofold. Number one, we want those students to broaden their horizon and work forcibly with disadvantaged populations and help them be successful. And they're put into those companies to help them develop their plans. And then we also want those companies to have the advantage of working with students at the University of Texas and all the IQ points that those students bring. It's been a really cool program. Maybe that's something that could be done here at the universities in Sri Lanka. I don't know. I have to think about it. I mentioned the triple helix, and I won't belabor this point too much. You're familiar with it. Many of you raised your hand. You know what it is. The collaboration is important, and only through collaboration can you accelerate. Austin, Texas could not go from a backwater provincial capital to the number one uh, center for, uh, for entrepreneurship, innovation, and places to live without that collaborative environment. That was the launching pad that, that got us to where we are. So what do I mean by let electrons be shared but ensure atoms collide? First of all, it's sort of the social media approach. Not just social media, but it's practicing the practice of communicating with people and sharing ideas. I brought my team to Austin and introduced them, my, my team from Andhra Pradesh to Austin, and, and they met all of the thought leaders, or many of the thought leaders that developed the Austin Innovation Ecosystem, uh, political leaders, entrepreneurs who had been successful, and they heard from them about why and how they were successful. And what they heard, what they said to me at the end was, Glenn, did you pay these people to say what they said? I said, no, what do you mean? They said, everybody talked about how collaborative it is in Texas. Well, it is. Texans think big. It's a big state. It, it could be one of the top five to eight economies in the world if it just was cut out by itself, given its gross uh, domestic product. They're big thinkers, but the attitude, and having grown up in the Silicon Valley, no disrespect to the Silicon Valley, that's home for me, essentially, because my family is there now, but it's become a very closed environment, very proprietary. It's why Californians are coming to Texas, because the thinking is open, it's collaborative, it's that there's more than enough for everybody, and again, everybody needs... All of, each of us needs all of us, and all of us needs each of us. That's what fuels the growth in Austin, collaborative culture. And then, the power of coffee and beer. Now, nothing magic about coffee or beer. The magic is in creating a sense of community in place. It's meeting together. It's 
taking the Telugu version of content, so my content, what I know, my expertise, and sharing that with others to create contentment in my ecosystem and establishing connections with others, networking. So collaborate, get out of the building, go talk to people, meet and share. That's what Ensure Atoms Collide means. The virtuous cycle, I'll talk about this really briefly. You can see the components here, hopefully. I'll give you one example. At the University of Texas, two students, RR and DN, names have been hidden to protect the, the guilty. They were students at the University of Texas. They shared some wisdom. That wisdom that they learned and gained from the, the Austin Technology Incubator and others at the IC Squared Institute and the university caused them to create a company called Furnace Software in 2006. They won the Moot Corp, uh, which was the first business plan competition in the US uh, hosted by the University of Texas. They won, as part of their winnings, a, an opportunity to join Austin Technology Incubator free of charge. Austin Technology Incubator helped them raise $10 million in 2007 and 2008. They raised a total raise of, of $10 million. That helped them create 21 employees and got the interest of BMC Software, who acquired the company in 2010. So Furnace was created in, 20, in 2006, and in 2010, they were acquired by BMC Software. Hallelujah, success. They were very happy with that. But they didn't stop there. After the liquidity event, RR decided that he wanted to give back, and so he came back to the Austin Technology Incubator as the director of the wireless vertical sector in the incubator. He then contributed to the endowment fund out of his earnings from the sale of Furnace to BMC back into the endowment fund of Texas Venture Labs, which is the new name of Moot Corp. Same thing, just a different name. We've changed the name to Texas Venture Labs. He put money back in. And then he founded a company about two years ago uh, called Datical with a $19 million investment. So he's creating a new startup. What's the message here? The virtuous cycle says if you do this correctly, you encourage people to do thinking out of the box, which then can lead to really good investment through a support of a commercialization ecosystem, those individuals, if they're continually nurtured, can be of benefit to you as a university and to you as a community because it's creating more jobs and wealth and then continues to propagate the, the revolving cycle. And this is how uh, innovation ecosystems are created. So what is success? People often ask me, what is success? Well, I have some definitions, but the one I like the best is this one. Success is stumbling from failure to failure, stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Guess who said this? Somebody who knew a lot about stumbling, failure, and success and was tremendously enthusiastic through the process, Sir Winston Churchill. So if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me, it ought to be good enough for you. One of the challenges that entrepreneurs face is failure. And how is failure perceived? In, in Australia, they call it the tall poppy syndrome, I believe. You know, if you stick your head up, you get it cut off, and so I'm not going to stick my head up. But you got to stick your head up. you got to take a risk. In sales, which is my background, studies say that the average sale is closed on the seventh call. It takes seven, six calls to get a yes. On the seventh call, you get the yes. You can't take failure personally. Failure is just a good teacher. And so don't be afraid to collaborate. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to stick your head up. Don't be afraid to move forward because the opportunities to help you, your family, and your Community, your state, your nation, and the world are beyond belief. This is you, and we, you want to get from innovation to market realization. 
There are gaps. You need to find an ecosystem that will help you bridge that gap. In our thinking, it's idea to product, getting products to, from innovation to the market, incubation, tech transfer, the triple helix collaboration model, and smart money are all the foundations that will help you bridge that gap to success. At the, Austin, at the University of Texas, we say what starts here changes the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go change the world. Thank you very much.